How's it going everybody? My name is Nori Plays. Well, what should I say? Nori draws at this point. This is day number three of the 100 day drawing series. And in this one, we're going to be going back to the very basics. How do you draw a head? Now, this is the only point of view you're going to get. I only have one camera. So this time you'll actually be able to see how my hands kind of work and draw. And then on the top right, or somewhere along that side, I'll have a reference that I've collected for the video for us to draw. So for the first one, we're going to be drawing a basic Loomis head. This is called a Loomis head because it starts with a circle and all the proportions are broken down. I'll show you. So first we start by drawing a circle. Now, this is where a lot of you will struggle. I struggle with this a lot even now. But... The way you grip your pencil also helps, so if you have it further away you need to really relax your hands and don't use your wrist. Don't use your wrist. I know a lot of you will use your wrist and your fingers to draw this. But try work on using your arm instead. Because your arm at the end of the day is going to be the biggest tool to your disposal. It has the widest range of motion. So when you're drawing big pieces you'll be able to do it with your arm easy. So work, work on your arm, that's one. So I'm going to draw it with my arm, not my wrist or my fingers. Just draw a circle with your the whole arm. Kind of imagine it as you're going around. That'll do for now. <laughs> it's not the cleanest, but then you divide it in the middle. Well, in this case, let's draw another circle. We'll complete this one later. But let's draw another one. Because in this case, he's got the head at an angle from the left. So we're going to try that. Because last episode, at the end of the hair episode, I talked about how we need we just need to learn to draw heads from different angles. So this is going to be really helpful. Alright, let me stop yapping to him. And then basically divide it like so. Uh, the camera might show it, might not. And then we draw the eye line. Now the eye line is kind of higher here because he's looking up a little bit. But we'll follow it. Follow the eye line. Like so. And then what happens is because this is called a cranium. We have to draw this section here. That's because this section here is for the ear. Like so. And that's where the ear kind of goes from. Same as the jawline. Okay? The jawline as well. Now you line up where you want your chin to go. And your nose line. Your nose line usually goes to the bottom of this. Like that. That's why it's like that in that image. Up there. The distance between the eyes and the nose is the same, and then the nose to the chin is also the same. So the chin would also be somewhere here. And then now that we know where the chin is, we can continue the jawline. Like so. We curve it off because we're drawing an anime head in this case, and a more female head. Also, if you curve, you draw a proportional curve, kind of like this, this is how wide the chin will be. Just so that you know how wide the chin is. And then from there it's kind of like that. The neck extends from the back of the cranium. So we'll draw the neck from here, like that, and then from the middle of the chin, and then downwards as well, like this. And then we extend the chin to the cheek, so the cheek is usually 
between these two points actually. So it goes right there on that spot. So you just curve it like this. And then from there, you just follow the cranium for the top of the head like this. And then you go back down into the neck. And then from there, we can fill in the ear and everything else. So ear starts from that intersection point. Like this. I feel like I got my circle wrong and all my proportions wrong, but this is more or less what you gotta do to practice drawing a head. Let's try a different reference. This is the most basic one that I have. But again, realize how most of these heads start with just a basic circle. So again, basic circle. And then this time they're facing forwards. So just split it down the middle. Like so. Imagine you're cutting this head like it's a pie, just in quarters, in halves, I mean, sorry. And then you draw a line at the bottom to indicate the nose line. And then so sometimes in anime, it's actually half of this distance here. That's why this person has done it here. And then the first line goes like this on both sides. And then it just joins up in the middle, like so. You can see I've messed this up because I, the middle line wasn't very straight. <laughs> so I messed this up a lot. Let's try this again. That's the whole point of practice. We have to just try it again. Notice how shaky my lines actually are uh, when I start drawing with a regular pencil. Also, this is awkward because there's a camera stand right there. So just my arm is wrapping around it. But basically the main point is to get these angles here first. And then the point here. And this one turned out a lot better than this one did. And then that would be your your head. Like that. Again, the ears would go here. And the ears are generally a shape where you go... Like that. It's literally just something as simple as that. That's the head from the front. So now we can apply this to the side and see how kind of the side looks if we can try replicate that with this method kind of combined with this method uh, together. So if we do the circle from both methods like this, let's try draw it looking up. That's the hardest head I've always had issues with is when a head is looking upwards like this. Cause that means the eyes are like going like this. And then the ears are pretty much because this is in perspective. This ear circle thing is going to be bending sideways. And then it would be like this. Because again, perspective is very important. Okay. And perspective, in perspective, these proportions get really warped. So, they actually get shortened. So, the nose would be somewhere here even. Yeah, see so if you... This is why you use the Loomis method, because... 
it clearly tells you where to line things up. And then the chin will be here. Which means that... So if the ear is there... Like this. Then the jawline extends. In this case, it goes up and curves back down like this. It's kind of bending the neck like this. And then you remember what I said about the chin? Well, the, the cheek, that goes right there. And then that goes around back to the ears. Like that. So that would be like a character looking up. And then you can feel the eyes in like this. And then because the nose is facing upwards, you kind of get these lines here. And then the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> extend the head make it a bit bigger actually no that was a mistake because again perspective warps it and kind of gets rid of that length so that would be like a head looking up at least from my attempt let's try a head looking down this time also let's try another reference because i have more so in this case i have solid examples where you can apply the eyes and the nose and stuff like that you can see this person is also using circles for the head but he's breaking it down differently so let's try break it down like this guy so again let's start with a circle i'm gonna move the book up a little bit okay there's a circle and then let's try this guy does things differently because he does an eye line and a brow line. Okay, so we're going to try with the brow line first. I'm basically going to try copy this pose right here, the middle one. The best I can. Let's give it a shot. So first he draws a brow line. This is interesting. He cuts the head like this into like a bread loaf looking thing. Which kind of makes it easier for him, I guess. Yeah, so let's, let's try copy that. Like this. And then the eye line. And then from the middle of this, he goes down. Like so. It's, it's very unclear how this guy maps his heads, but he has a unique way he does it, I assume. He can already see this stuff before he does it. There's an eye line. Like so. And then I guess I'm going to assume the chin is somewhere here. It's a bit to the right of our beginning line, so it would be here. So let's just do that and then lightly sketch the in-between. Do this, the cheek would go wrap around. And then he does that, I think. I can't be too sure. And then the neck goes down. He draws the underside. And then goes down. Like this. And then you get the head. Interesting method. 
because I feel like it works for him, right? And then from the nose line, which is this, he draws the ear, the bottom of the ear. Like this. Really cur curious and interesting technique from this guy. But then, because we have a brow line, can draw the brow in. Like this. And then the other brow follows that. It's really cool. And then the eye, he actually draws the eye sockets. But first we should draw the nose. Like there. And it goes down. I can already see where we messed up because the nose actually sticks out from the head. So if we rub this line out, just quick. Then just fix the nose. Well, we don't need to fix the nose. But just fix the whatever that is. I like that. And like that. And that makes a bit more sense to me. And then, boop, boop, the little nostril lines go there. And then the eyes sit on top of this line as well. Let's try that in the same style that he's done. It's like this, and then he has his eyelashes. And then the eye looking this way. And draw the other eye in perspective like that. Again, my head isn't as good as his. His is a lot more proportionate. But that's because he's practiced this a lot. And then what I can do is go over these in ink to really show you guys the outline, what it looks like at the end. And clean up some of the, <laughs> the lines here. There you go, that would be kind of my take on that head. It's not the same at all. It, it's... I will need to practice this in between episodes to just get the hang of... Structuring the head like properly for all of you. <laughs> Let alone adding hair to this after. I know we did an episode on hair, but... I'm gonna be honest, we're not gonna learn hair in one day. There is no way in hell that you're gonna learn something over one day. You learn something by doing it every single day. Okay, here's another interesting method. This is called a box method of drawing a head. So what you basically do is you draw a box, a 3D box, because anyone can draw a box, right? I'm gonna draw one right now. So say we draw a head that's looking up at an angle. Or, yeah, looking up at an angle. The most important thing to do is catch the proportions of the box, though. To boom, boom, and then boom. And then find the mid middle. And to find the middle, you can sometimes do a cross. I guess that would be the middle. If my cross wasn't wonky. And then to find the middle here, you do this. It's 
the middle is actually that. And then the middle over here would be here. Like so. This is very important. Because you need to know the middle of everything. Everything. For this to work. And then the rest I'll draw in pen. So. This is kind of guesswork at this point. But the middle is your eye line. So you've already got everything laid out for you. Pretty much. Uh, the middle of the ear. Is like way over here. So you have the ear there. And then basically use this box to curve around the head. So again from the eye point. It curves out. Goes over the ear. And then from here. It also curves out. Like this. Towards where the chin is. And it almost looks like a bean. Because of that. Something like this. Um, and then the mouth. I'm not very good at this method. But. If it helps you. It could probably help you like. Uh, a lot. <laughs> and then you draw the, the eyes. And so on and so forth. Now I feel like I butchered this one. I completely butchered this one. And you have him. Uh, the hardest, again, the hardest pose for me to draw were the ones where you were looking up. Those were easily some of the hardest poses. So uh, for me, I can tell that the box method is going to work for me because I cannot see the shape within the cube. I cannot see like the general head shapes that are within the cube. I actually preferred the circle method personally. Okay, here's another interesting one. Basically, this is the head using another circle method, but this time it's weirdly broken down and we'll see why it's so weirdly broken down. So, uh, do we have any more space? I mean, I guess we can rub out this first one. Okay, cool. So we'll do it up here in the corner. So I'm going to draw another circle again. Uh, that wasn't a very neat circle. It's okay. You can always try again. There's gonna be a massive mess on my desk after this. That's a lot better of a circle. If it also helps you, you don't have to draw it in one stroke. You can draw it in several. I've seen some people do it like that as well. In my case, I just like getting it done in one stroke. So, let's see here. From the looks of it, I'm going to do this in Byro as well. And we're going to copy the exact same angle that he drew his head with. So, from here, he's already designated where the cranium is first. I think that's the first thing he did. As well as, yeah. So, he drew the cranium first. Which is... Like this in his case, I think. It's a... No, knowing how to draw circles in perspective will help here as well. So, from there... He already knows... That this line is gonna go here. And then from the circle, he also knows that this is going to curve like this. It's basic uh, knowledge to him. And then he doesn't need that whole line going across. But I'm going to do it just to show you guys what he's thinking while he's drawing his head. And then from there, this is interesting because he also does the bottom of the eye. So I don't know if this is the brow line, but... He does the bottom. Because he can angle it. His head like this. And 
And then in turn, let's draw the top of the head that he's drawn like this. Okay, then I guess we can draw the middle line. He also draws the hairline. That's what those uh, side strokes are. But let's draw the middle line first. So it goes down. And then it kind of intersects and it goes off like this. In his head. He already knows the angle. At which he's going to draw everything at. And then from there, it seems that he goes down here. And then he does that to indicate where the chin will be, the point of the chin. Which is pretty much the same distance as from the top of the head to the bottom of the head to so be right there-ish I think and then also he draws this curve that we saw on the Loomis method good uh, probably towards the more bottom side of the ear okay and then this curves outwards and back in towards that chin area. This extends down. <laughs> That's kind of what he did. Uh, mine is very butchered because this is sticking out too far wide. It's more subtle. Like that. And... The way it goes out is more subtle too. Again, these are techniques people have made for probably themselves, right? After they've worked on these techniques themselves for a while, they figured out this is the best method himself uh, for himself to draw these things. This is what I mean, like you don't you don't always have to follow every single method out there you need to find the best method that works for you instead because again something like this is not gonna help me uh the box method isn't gonna help me either so the best method that i've had is the circle method uh so that's what i might stick to for a while and then from there you basically use the technique that you want to use and you break gesture drawing down so from day one that we did all those gesture drawings let's try do that but using one of these head methods to figure out what how to how, how it's gonna look okay so here we go i've pulled up a reference that could work for this so for me, I know that the circle method just works for me because I know where to find that circle within a head, right? So I'm going to do this on the next page. Just really quick. I'm going to turn the page over. And then we're going to try break this down into that technique that you've chosen. So in my case, it's going to be the head. Uh, the circle technique.
this is why I got our heads so wrong. Look at what her neck is. I finished the neck here when in reality it comes out somewhere. I don't know where. <laughs> you know, it usually comes out somewhere here and then here instead. See that? Like that makes more sense when I do this than what I did there, making it come out of the back of the head. <laughs> the lips are so bad too. <laughs> but you know what? We'll improve. We'll improve that, at this kind of stuff. Because we've been doing nothing but digital lately, but you, as you can see, the moment I go to traditional, I am trash. I'm just hot garbage. So I feel like I should do more traditional episodes to end it off, but this looks hilarious as hell. Uh, this doesn't look like her at all, but... That's the whole learning experience, I guess. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. It wasn't as good as I'd hope it turned out this time. Uh, probably because my expectations were really high going into this. Uh, also, the angle's really hard to draw from. I'm Again, I'm leaning really far back. So I can't get my drawings to be accurate compared to as if I was leaning over the piece of paper. So I can see from above, like, what you guys see with the camera. So it's kind of, it's kind of, it would be easier that way. I'll figure out how to do more of these, though, but... For now, if you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like button, comment down below, and subscribe if you are new. Apart from that, I'll catch all of you in the next one. Peace out.